Welcome to Creator Weekly Live for April 14th, 2024. I'm Peggy Kay, and today there are updates from YouTube, from Google with a bunch of new generative AI features, including Google Photos editing that's going to be available to everyone, and some social media updates I think that you will find interesting. So let me start with the update for YouTube shopping. YouTube shopping is a feature that is available to channels that are in the YouTube partner program. So if you are partnered, you can enable shopping. And this new feature is called shopping collections. Again, you can set up shopping for your channel, link approved platforms and retailers to sell your own merch. And the idea with a collection is that you make a collection. I know this seems obvious, but I just wanted to show an example. This is an example in the announcement from the Long Hair Pretty Nails channel. And this is the shopping tab on their channel. And if you notice, they have a featured collection on, a, on their store tab. If you click the featured collection, it has its own landing page with a nice header and then a collection of items you can buy. These are actually affiliate links, I believe. And one of the things that's pretty cool is if your channel is eligible, you can, uh, you, if your channel is eligible, you can set up affiliate shopping. And I just wanted to scroll down. So if you have the option to sell affiliate products, there is a new affiliate hub on YouTube. You can go to the YouTube app and find the latest list of shopping partners, uh, commission rates, promo codes, request samples, and so forth. Affiliate links are only available to bigger channels. You have to not only have your channel in the YouTube Partner Program, you need at least 15,000 subscribers. This is only in the US. Uh, you can't be made for kids or an official artist channel and no active community guidelines strikes. But if you are eligible, you can sell things from affiliate retailers on your channel as well. So. If you follow creators, it, especially like beauty creators, this seems to be popular, check out their store tab and see if they've created any collections. There you can find things that you're interested in. A couple of other small video related to updates. Let me just switch tabs here. Facebook has a brand new video player on mobile devices. This is a full screen video player that includes reels, uh, long videos and live streams. You can switch to horizontal. They actually have a slider so you can jump back and forth in the video very similar to YouTube, kind of surprising Facebook didn't have this until now, but it is a video player improvement. And they say they will also have better 
video recommendations. There's also an update on Streamlabs where you can now more easily go live on TikTok from a desktop computer. Previously, uh, you needed a stream key and so forth. This is an update on TikTok's end, I believe, that lets you just connect your TikTok account to Streamlabs and then you can just go live. This will probably be available for other streaming platforms as well. So those are the big video updates for this week. Let me quickly switch to the chat. Welcome everyone who's here live. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you say hi. Uh, I see Craig is here and Braylon is here. Good to see you, everyone. And really, I'd like to hear what you guys think of this week's updates, especially what I'm going to get to now, where this week, was Google Cloud Next. And this is Google's big conference that's focused on cloud platform and Google Workspace. They had it in Las Vegas this year. It was huge. This used to be smaller and in San Francisco. So this is a big deal for Google. These are paying customers. So it's good things. Oh, yes. Hello to Mark also. Good to see you here. So I want to talk about what Google talked about at Google Cloud Next. And I think it's probably no surprise at all that it was all about the AI this year. They announced a bunch of new AI features for Google Workspace. And one of the things that I think is really cool is a brand new video editor. So give me just a moment. All right. Sorry, I'm a little disorganized this morning. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was a big announcement that Google made which is a new app called Google Vids. Google Vids is supposed to be part of the whole G Suite suite of apps like Docs and Sheets and Slides. It has the option to use AI to create a draft video, and then it will kind of assemble a whole draft video using stock clips and images and so forth. This is just from their presentation. You see, uh, hello, let's make a video. Uh, and you can start with a template. And you can do voiceovers using their AI voices. So this is really designed for presentation kind of videos. It's aimed at businesses. Uh, but I think this seems like it'll be a really cool tool. And I wanted to mention that it is going to be available in June to Google Workspace Labs. Google Workspace Labs gives your personal account access to a lot of Google's AI features while they are sort of sort of in the experimental stage. If you have not signed up for Workspace Labs, you can do that. There's a link uh, showing on the screen right now. This is only available in certain countries. It may be US only, I'm not sure. But do check it out. Google has said that 
Google Vids will be available in Workspace Labs in June. So that's coming up pretty quickly, like a month and a half or so. So this seems like a really neat platform. We haven't seen something new in the suite of G Suite apps for a while. That was the big update, but they also talked about a few other changes. I'll mention quickly, uh, they have an AI meetings and messaging add-on for Google Workspace. This is for paid Google Workspace accounts, but I wanted to highlight the AI features that are coming to Google Meet and Google Chat. So in Google Meet, they already have generative backgrounds that you can use the AI to make a background, a studio look, studio sound, and studio lighting. So you use sort of AI tools to adjust those things. Real-time translated captions, take notes for me, which is coming soon in alpha, and upcoming features, translate for me. So you can get Google Meet to translate Automatically, it will detect the language. Uh, adaptive audio for synchronized audio and no feedback. That's for meeting rooms. And a screen share watermark to discourage copying and unauthorized distribution of shared content. Finally, um, some of those features, again, are available in Google Workspace Labs, such as the generative AI-created backgrounds. So definitely check that out. Again, I'll show the link to sign up for Workspace Labs. Do that. I don't know which of these features is going to be available in Workspace Labs, but why not sign up and you can try it. The other thing they mentioned is that there is going to be a Google Chat uh, feature, on-demand conversation summaries in the home view of Google Chat, that seems like it will be really useful. And I'll mention that Google Chat has two other big updates that they announced, non-AI related. If you are an enterprise customer, you can have spaces up to 500,000 people. Obviously, that's for really big organizations like Google. The other update that they mentioned, Let's see if I can find it here. Um, let's see. Oh, the other the Google Chat update that will be available soon, again, to Google's workspace is interoperability with Slack and Teams. You have to have a Mio account to do that. And if you use Google Chat for work or for school, that's something that your Google Workspace administrator would have to enable. But that's pretty cool. It coming into a new era, partially because there are legal requirements that there needs to be interoperability between different platforms. So it's really useful, I think, that you won't have to necessarily have accounts on all these different platforms. If you use Google Chat and you're working with someone whose organization uses Google Meet, you can talk to each other without having to have new accounts. Uh, welcome, Chef. That's I think a really big deal. The real time translation, along with closed captions, really has the possibility of improving conversation. You can do some of this in Google Translate. If you've used Google Translate, it will translate text and I think speech, detecting what the language is and then translating it into your own language. I assume this is sort of an outshoot from that, but having it all in real time is really a big deal. And 
for international organizations or even, you know, for personal accounts, it would be useful. I don't know if it will ever be available to personal accounts. I believe all of the translation features for Google Meet are only Google Workspace with an Aon add-on right now. And so for Google Workspace, that's an additional $10 a month, which seems pricey, but what do I know? Okay, so there are a couple of other updates from Google. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. And I need to switch tabs. All right. For Google Docs, they're allowing you to add a full screen, full, what is that? full bleed image to the top of your document. That makes it look a lot prettier. You can see in this screenshot that they shared, they're using an AI tool to generate that image. I'm not sure if you'd actually necessarily want to do that on an important document. Maybe you would. But it's again how Google is integrating generative AI in addition to some other features. I think there's another feature uh, coming to Google Docs that's really interesting where it says you will be able to organize multiple documents within one document. It's not clear to me how this is going to work exactly, but the idea is that instead of having a bunch of related documents, they're all interconnected. I think that's very similar to something that Microsoft Word does. And it seems like that is likely to be available to everyone where these AA features may end up being paid features. There is also uh, a new Google Docs feature. Uh, there's a help me write on Gmail feature on mobile. You can now prompt it with your voice. And there's a feature called Instant Polish that's coming, which will let you transform just jotted notes into an actual polished email, single click, no prompt needed. Uh, it says that these new experiences will be available to Gemini Enterprise and Gemini Business customers and Google One AI Premium subscribers. Google One AI Premium is for personal accounts. So you can pay an extra fee. Uh, you need to have Google One with at least two terabytes of data, I believe, and then you can add this on on top of it. So, Uh, Mark says, I like the extra two terabytes of storage that comes with my personal Google workspace. Yeah, that extra storage makes a big difference. So you get extra features and extra storage, which is nice. None of these have mentioned Google Workspace individual, though. I think that's interesting. I don't know what they're doing. I assume there would be a Google Workspace individual add-on for AI at some point, because right now it seems like you would have to subscribe both to Google One and Google Workspace Individual, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. The other big AI update, which I think you guys will like, is that a bunch of AI-based editing tools in Google photos is becoming available to everyone. So if you use Google Photos on an Android or iOS device that meets the basic technical requirements, then you will have access to Magic Eraser, 
portrait light, which uh, lets you adjust the lighting on your photos, and photo unblur, which does exactly what it's called. You have a blurry photo and it makes it less blurry. You can also make complex edits with Magic Editor. Uh, their description using generative AI, it makes it easy to do complex photo edits like repositioning your subject or turning the sky from gray to blue. So Google Photos users on Android and iOS will get 10 magic editor saves per month. So this is not unlimited access. It, if you want unlimited access, you need to have a Pixel device and the magic editor is expanding access from just the Pixel 8 to more Pixel devices. Or you need Google One premium account with at least two terabytes of data. Those give you unlimited access to the magic editor. I've played with the Magic Editor some. It's actually pretty neat. It's not something I would use all the time though. So if you have a supported device, and I think most recent phones probably can use this, check it out. Maybe it will encourage you to pay for a Google One Premium subscription. The Google One Premium subscription comes with a Sorry, bunch of other I features as well. Please turn on Wi-Fi and try again. <laughs> that was my Google Home. Sorry about that. It's easily triggered. Uh, Chef says, uh, the Eclipse was awesome with your Galaxy 23 Ultra. Oh, that's amazing. I really have a bunch of sort of sad feelings that I missed out on the eclipse. Maybe I will be available, able to see the next one, which is like in 20 years from now, or travel to a different country. I think there's one in Australia in just a few years, but that's really cool that phones today can take such amazing photos. And now you get the Google Photos AI editing tools. I want to say hi to Eileen. Good to see you here. Oh, and Eileen has the store tab on her channel. Yes, that's a great idea. You guys should check out her channel and the store tab. I'll be curious to hear what you think about the new shopping collections and whether that turns out to be a useful thing to you. So I'm going to switch gears to mention just a few social media updates. And I hate sharing tabs from Substack because they always have this like pop-up that comes up. I cleared that. So one of the things that is really interesting to me is how Substack is trying to re reinvent itself. You know, it starts out as an email newsletter platform, but they're really putting in all these social features and discovery, and you can now post posts uh, separate from your newsletter. And now they're trying to attract podcasts. I think this is an interesting take. Um, one of the things that they have just implemented is integration with Spotify. You can sync and distribute all your free and paid episodes to Spotify. So you host your podcast on Substack and you synchronize to Spotify so people can find it there. 
it's kind of a weird thing because really the beauty of podcasts is that they should have an RSS feed that's available on any platform where you can listen to podcasts, YouTube Music, a bunch of other podcasting platforms. It's not great if Substack doesn't have a feed and requires, you know, special integration. I don't know how that will work exactly, but they have all this information, like being able to import your podcast to Substack so you can switch platforms. They also have a special templates and things uh, for publications on Substack. It's really interesting to see. So Substack is more of a blogging content hosting platform than just newsletters. Maybe newsletters just don't cut it. Anyway. Interesting stuff happening over at Substack. And I think, you know, it's important to say that Substack does pay and encourage a lot of really nasty content. It's harder, you know, they say they're just a content platform, but then they put in all these social features and so forth. It makes it harder to argue that. So a lot of newsletter writers have left Substack, gone to other prog programs, other platforms, because they don't want to be associated with all the terrible people there. A couple new social networks. I know it's always new. It's always, you know, do you make an account? There is a new social network called Lyric, L-Y-R-A-K. I don't know how you pronounce it. This is supposed to focus on news and real-time discussions. And there's a bunch of information about it. Um, and it has interesting monetization options. They have 50% ad revenue sharing which is nice. You can also enable paid posts with microtransactions. And you can set the amount from anywhere to a penny to $99. And then you can have exclusive content with paid subscriptions and a tip jar. So it has all the standard monetization features, but they're built right into the platform. They're giving special prominence to verified journalists and other big creators. So it's supposed to be, you know, quality information, real time of the news, be interesting to see where it goes. The other interesting platform that really, that just launched publicly in the past couple of days, is something called Air Chat, and you may see buzz about this. Air Chat is unique in that you only leave voice messages. It's all designed around voice, but it's not a chat live, real-time chatting platform. It's sort of like Twitter or most other social media networks where it's asynchronous. You just leave voice messages, they are automatically transcribed. I think that's an interesting twist. It sounds terrible to me. I usually scroll social media with the audio turned off and not something I'm interested in, but I read somewhere that, for example, in Southeast Asia, voice messaging is much more popular. So who knows? Another day, another platform. There's also more stupidity happening over on X. You know, if you're over there, there's this whole thing where there are paid subscriptions, get a ver verified check mark. 
just a couple of weeks ago, they added the verified check mark back to more popular profiles free of charge. And now they're removing the, the setting that allows people to hide the verified check mark. So the problem is that the ver verified check mark doesn't mean anything. It means you either have a bunch of followers or that you're paying for it. And there's no actual verification involved. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, that's what X makes me say. I just throw up my hands. So those are the updates for this week. I hope you had a great weekend and you have a great week. Right now and next weekend, you can go to the Coachella channel on YouTube and get the music festival for free if you're interested in some music. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you all next week.